Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Break by PIA. Um, my name is Claire Urban. I'm Government Affairs Counsel here for PIA Northeast. And today we're joined by Brad Latchett. Uh, he's here to talk about um, excess and surplus lines. Specifically, do the rules apply? So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Brad. Great. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this segment of The Break. Uh, so as Claire mentioned, we're going to be discussing uh, access and surplus lines. Do the rules apply? Uh, specifically, we get a lot of calls um, about can a carrier do X, Y, and Z to my policyholder? And one of the questions that we always ask in return is, is this policy an admitted carrier or an, an ENS or non admitted carrier? Uh, we ask that question because depending on the answer that we get back, the, the rules are going to be much different. So I wanted to discuss that for a few minutes. People have an understanding of when the rules apply and when they don't, basically. So just quickly, um, the ENS uh, are considered uh, access and surplus lines, ENS, are unauthorized, quote unquote, carriers. Um, it means that the state does not regulate them. They don't have to file rates. Uh, they, many of the, the rules, like cancellation rules, which we'll talk about in a second, do not apply to ENS carriers. They're unauthorized, don't operate in the state. Now that provides some, some benefits but also some drawbacks depending on the policy or the protections. So this means that the rules pertaining to ENS carriers may differ considerably from emitted market. Um, we might have a standard notice requirement on all your emitted market, but for excess, it's not gonna apply there. And it could be different for each excess carrier depending on their own rules. Again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and in many cases, it's gonna be the policy itself as opposed to the law that's gonna determine what a carrier and a policy holder can and can't do. Usually when we're talking about insurance, we have insurance laws and regulations that the states put in place. That dictates a lot of what the policy holder and particularly the carrier can do when we're talking about the middle lines. ENS, that's not the case. So we're gonna look at the actual language of the contract itself, which creates um, some opportunities for there to be differences between policies even providing similar coverage. So I'm gonna look real quickly at the states within the PIA Northeast footprint, excuse me, about what's included and what's not. So we have Connecticut, uh, they include excess lines in their rules, um, insurance law. So if you're in Connecticut, you can kind of rest assured that if you're getting a cancellation notice or there's a change in terms, go to the law, that's gonna dictate. Um, there's gonna be links below here uh, with all the rules for each state. Um, if you're one of the states where access um, is included in the insurance law, look at these documents are gonna be helpful. They're, they're helpful regardless, um, but especially in, in that regard. For New Hampshire, this is our first state that we see where there's a, a difference between lines and that's very common. Um, personal lines are excluded, commercial lines included. That means that access lines policies are excluded from the personal lines commercial, or, I'm sorry, personal lines insurance rules, but they are included in the commercial lines uh, insurance rules. Now that's the inverse in New Jersey and New York to confuse things even more. And that's what we tend to see uh, usually uh, as personal lines uh, includes access lines policies into the rules um, because you're dealing with personal um, policies perhaps unsophisticated policyholders, the rules tend to apply more strictly there and include access. Whereas in commercial, where there's generally uh, considered to be more sophisticated insurance consumers, um, you're gonna have them excluded. Also more complex risks, more variability. Um, so they will be excluded from the insurance law in New Jersey, New York, and you'll see some other states too. Vermont excluded across the board, the insurance law doesn't apply. Um, so you wanna look to the contract in those states. Now, why is this important? Or what are some important things to watch for? Um, cancellation provisions, that's a big one and probably the one we, we feel the, the most questions on. Um, ENS policies, if, if um, they weren't on that list before, if, if the state laws don't include them, um, can basically do whatever they want in terms of notification. Now, they have to follow the terms of the contract, but the carriers write the contract. So if they say they are gonna give 15 days notice, and that's gonna be in the contract and they have to give 15 days notice no matter what the law says. Um, so make sure you, you pay attention to the cancellation revisions in those contracts to see what the actual notice requirement is. Um, this will apply to policyholders as well for policyholder initiated cancellations. There might be um, rules in there about how much notice they must give to the carrier and how they must deliver that notice. Um, notice of change of terms, slightly different from cancellation revisions, right? Um, if there's going to be a change in renewal terms, um, a midterm increase in uh, premium, 
for a renewal increase in premium, a lot of states require notice for those, right? But again, ENS not going to be required because they're outside the law. So look at the, the terms to see if notice needs to be given for those changes. And then go into the changes themselves. Um, again, many states cap the amount of premium, um, how much it can be increased on policies because CNS outside, there might be some language in there saying that premium will, can only go up X amount. Probably not, probably can go up as much as they wanted to. But again, be aware that's another area where there's gonna be a major difference between the law and the policy itself. So with that, my quick summary of ENS and when the rules do and do not apply. If you have any questions, as always, feel, please feel free to email either myself or Claire, as well as the Resource Center. Um, if you have any other questions, and there are all those links I mentioned before to our quick sources, as well as a break that we did um, a few weeks ago on the actual cancellation rules for the states. So if you are interested, watch that. That'll give you a little bit more information um, on that topic. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Claire and I would thank everybody for joining us today. Nope, you're muted, Claire. Sorry about that. That's all That's all I have. I don't have any further further questions at uh, this level of the topic, but I would keep an eye out for further ENS related videos from us in coming months, because as Brad said, we are getting a lot of questions about this due to the changes in the market going into the new year. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time.